little while ago I did a tutorial on making a procedural hexagonal shield using geometry nodes. And I also did a tutorial regarding Spider-Man No Way Home, which has been the most well-received video of the channel so far. So I decided to combine both of them to create a suit up animation. We are going to talk about making a mask for the suit up, distorting the edges, displacing the edges, making more layers, extracting values for materials, and what to do with our original mesh. I know we got a lot to cover, so without any further introduction, let's suit up our spidey. To get started, here I have two models, our original model and the one we are suiting up, the iron spider suit. Just like in my hexagonal shield video, here we need an object to make a mask for our iron spider suit. For that, add an empty sphere. You can use any object here, but using an empty sphere or a mesh sphere will make things easier for us. Now I place this empty somewhere around here and rename it to mask. Select our iron spider suit, go to geometry nodes workspace and create a new geo node setup. Rename it, let's call it SM iron suit up. Pin it so that it doesn't matter which object we have selected, this will always be here. Now drag and drop our mask to the setup, set it to relative. Again, just like our hexagonal shield tutorial, we need to calculate the distance between each point of the mesh and the location of the empty. For that, I am going to use a vector math distance node. And now plug the position data of the points. Let's add a delete geometry node to make our suit up process. Immediately, everything is gone, deleted. So we need to tell to this selection socket which areas we need to keep and which we want to delete. In other words, everything we want needs to be value of zero or black. And everything we need to go away needs to be value of one or white. So how are we going to create that black and white mask from our distance? We can use greater than method for this. Here we have few options. All the top three options will work for this. Today, I'm going to use compare greater than node. This B value will be our threshold, which means every distant value which is greater than our threshold will be value of one or Y, which also means they will be deleted and everything else will stay. To make this mask easy to control, I can use our empty scale for the threshold. Now everything inside our empty will stay and everything else will get deleted. You can change the delete method to age or faces to get different results. But now our mask looks very even. If you're using a very high dense mesh, you can clearly see a spherical shape in our suit. So let's distort that using a noise texture node. I'm going to mix it with the position or the location output. I think in my test, I use it with location, but here I, I'll use it with position. Mix them using a mix RGB node and set the blend type to linear light. Tweak the values until it gives a good result. When you're done tweaking, you can frame this whole thing if you like to organize your stuff. Shift P to frame and Alt P to remove from the frame. We created our mask. Let's make that more like it's forming and then stick to the shape instead of just appearing out of thin air. For that, I'm going to displace the edges using a set position node. Since we want a more linear follow of our displacement, I'm going to create a zero to one range gradient near the edge. For that, grab the distance and plug to a map range node. Then we need to tell where our gradient is going to start. I subtract a value from our scale and plug it to from min and then directly plug the scale to from max. In that way, we have a gradient that goes from 0.1 units behind our edge to all the way to end of the mass. If we plug this to offset now, our mass is okay, but our displacement is not. That is because we need to displace this along the normals of our points. For that, multiply this with a normal node. Now our displacement is right, but it is too much. You can reduce the strength by changing to max value. But here, I'm going to use a multiply node. See, we have our suit up. All we have to do is animate the scale and the location of our empty to give the suit up illusion. 
But the thing about suit up animation is the more layers you add to it, the more realistic it's going to look. More believable, I should say. So I am going to add another layer. But we are going to face a problem here if we are going to create that in the same setup. Because at one point, we definitely have to use the join geometry node to keep our original geometry and soon. But as soon as you use join geometry, you are going to mess up the UVs. And that's because so far, we just edited our OG mesh. We didn't create anything new. But soon as we join that mesh with something else, we are just outputting a different mesh. At least to my understanding, there's no easy fix for this. I feel like there may be a method using capture attributes and face corners, but I haven't figured it out yet. If you know, then please comment below. That will be really helpful. So to create a new layer, we need to duplicate this suit. Before that, I need to extract some values from the setup. Distance and scale. Now select our suit, duplicate it, rename it, unlink the geo node and rename the new one to something else. I hide our OG suit and unpin its geo setup. Now we can easily work on the other layer. I'm also going to delete most of these nodes because it's easy to look at, easy to understand and easy to explain. We only left with delete geometry and set position nodes. I'm going to create a wireframe layer at the edge of our mask. In the add menu, under groups, we have the node group that we created for our OG suit. And we also have access to our extracted distance and scale. For this new setup, just pay attention to what I am doing. I use a less than node to create a mask. Now we are deleting everything that is inside our empty. But I want it to start deleting just slightly behind our empty's edge. For that, I use a subtract node and subtract a lower value from our scale. In this way, I create another mask by deleting everything that is not inside our empty. For that, Control Shift D to duplicate without losing the connection and change the map type to greater than and this to add. Now we have two masks. Since we made an offset to both of our masks, there's an area where both of these overlap. To only have that area, I combine these two masks using an add node. Look at that. Let's displace this mesh too. I'm going to repeat the same thing I did earlier with few exceptions. For the from min, I use this scale value and for the from max, I use the scale that we added a value. In that way, we can have a nice gradient. Again, to change the strength, I use a multiply node. We got our mesh. Let's turn this into a wireframe look. I convert this mesh to a curve and back into a mesh so that we can have this profile curve input, which we are going to plug a curve primitive. I used a circle with very low resolution and low radius. We can unhide the suit to see this in full glory. Well, right now our wires have the same radius throughout. I can vary it using a set curve radius node. And for its radius input, I am going to drag the gradient we created. Now you can see it starts from a radius of zero and to the end of the mesh, it has the full radius. If you want these wires to be on top of the suit, you can change the two min value. Since that is going to mess up our gradient, I use another map range node to do that. But I prefer the previous look. And just like that, we have another layer to our suit up animation. To make this hexagonal shape, I add a triangulate node and turn these quads to tris. Then use a dual mesh node to make them hexagonal shapes. Depending on where you are going to use these two nodes, before or after the delete geometry, it will have a different look. Now we have hexagon shaped wires. Let's add a material for this. For the material, I am going to extract the gradient we created earlier. We don't need to use capture attribute node here. If you like to know about capture attribute node and this flame effect, check my Burn It Flames tutorial. Give a name to our attribute. 
To use our gradient in shader editor, use attribute node and copy paste the attribute name. Now you can use this gradient for many things. Here are a few things I tried. If you want a more smooth edges, you can subdivide the mesh, but if your mesh is high dense, just hope it won't crash. I will extract a few values to finalize things. You can add solidify modifier for some thickness. Now I'm going to animate our empty, starting small to all the way covering up our character. And when you enable all the geo nodes, Let's talk about the practicality of this. If I disable all the geo nodes, you can see that both of the models have exact same anatomy. They are basically the same model. And since I use Mixamo to rig the model separately, now it has a slight offset in some areas from other model. But that's not a big problem. Well, the head is a problem, but first let's deal with the body. When the suit up happens, I want this model to shrink a little bit. For that I use a similar method but this time I multiplied it by negative 1 to displace inwards. And I also delete the geometry after that. We have to use low values for shrinking strength. Because in small areas like fingers, mesh could shrink and then come out from the other side. This is something that definitely going to happen around the head a lot. So although shrinking and deleting probably fix most of the issues, we have to use a different method for the head. To fit the head to our small spidey head, I create a few shape keys and change the angle of the ears, hair and overall scale of the head. In this way I can manually animate the head to fit the suit. You can use few empties instead of one to create more controlled suit up animation. But to keep the tutorial more simple and easy to follow, I am happy with just one. Right now I'm currently working on a little short combining a few tutorials I did earlier and some upcoming ones. So keep an eye on that. So that's it. That's it for this part. It's a little long tutorial but I believe you learned something useful. So if you did, that's great. I mean, that's what we like to do. We not only create stuff, we let you create with us. Hit that like button and comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to HellFX Learn so you won't miss out with the next video drops. So, until next time, stay